call the meeting to order. Councilman Rana, would you lead us in the invocation? Yes. Hold on, I'll get you. Hold on. Thank you. Would you all please keep Wesley Jordan in your prayers? Wesley has had more operations than we can possibly count. He's still not doing very, very well. He, and so any prayer you could say on his behalf for Wesley and his family would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. Gotcha. I, uh, too, would like to ask everyone to keep one of our uh, over 30 years uh, city workers in the Recreation Department, Mr. Gus Soniak. Mother has gone on to glory. She was 95 years young. And uh, I will ask to ask you and all your prayers for, for her and for Mr. Soniak. Thank you. Thank you. Let us bow our heads and remember that we are in the presence of the Lord. Uh, dear Lord, as our children begin this new school year, we gather once again as a community of believers. We thank you for the energy and the spirit that you renewed in our families through the summer months. We thank you for the time to enjoy our families and friends and to reflect on what is important in our lives. Let this new school year be marked by enthusiasm and love so that we, so that with the inspiration of your spirit, we may continue to grow in our faith. Help us to fulfill your hope for us with honest intentions and works of faith. Let us be gentle with ourselves and bring laughter, joy, and love to others. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Councilman Klein, will you lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum. Um, Mr. Chairman, we've received a request to amend the agenda to include item 3C, application number 1968-16, Durante Jones to hold a public gathering on August 7th, 2016, from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. for the purpose of a college going away party at 1820 Lloyd Price Street, Kenner, Louisiana. Motion by Councilman Impostato, seconded by Councilman Carroll, to suspend the council rules. All members, please vote to suspend the council rules. Can it wait on the motion? Yeah. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 6-0. Motion by Councilman Impostato, seconded by Councilman Carroll. <clears throat> to amend agen the agenda to add item 3C to the agenda. Um, is that at this time, if there's anyone in the audience wishing to object or speak on this item, please come forward at this time and be heard concerning adding item 3C to the agenda. Seeing no one wishing to be heard, uh, motion by Councilman Impostato, seconded by Councilman Carroll to uh, add item 3C to the agenda. Councilman Carroll, I understand we have a motion to amend item, the title of item 3C. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Madam Clerk and, uh, and the council, I'd like to amend that to, to, to end at 8 p.m. instead of 9 p.m. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Certainly. Need a vote. Councilman, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 6-0 to amend. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, the consent agenda. Um, item one is approval of minutes of the regular council meeting of July 21st, 2016. Item two is approval of alcoholic beverage permit applications. Item 2A is a resolution granting an alcoholic beverage permit to Divine Mercy Catholic Church Seafood Festival on October 14th, 15th, and 16th, 2016 at 4337 Salentini Parkway, Kenner, Louisiana. Item 3 is approval of bingo and pub 
public gathering applications. Item 3A is application number 1964-16, New Orleans Track Club to hold a public gathering on October 8, 2016 from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. for the purpose of a road race run walk fundraiser for, in Rivertown, Canada, Louisiana. Item 3B is application number 1966-16, Celebration Hispania de Kenner to hold a public gathering on August 13, 2016 from 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. for the purpose of a Tope de Santo Domingo St. Dominic Fest at Kenner Heritage Park, Kenner, Louisiana. And that concludes our consent agenda. Precinct. We read it into the record earlier. Thank you. Motion by Councilman DeFranches, seconded by Councilman Reno to approve the consent agenda. Seeing no discussion, Councilman, please vote. Motion passes 6 0. Item 9 is public appearance for public hearings for final passage. We have none. Item 10 is opening of bids. We have none. Item 11 is a reclassification of zoning for final passage. We have none. Item 12 is other ordinances for final passage. Item 12A is summary ordinance number 12,095, an ordinance amending the Kenner Code of Ordinances, Article 4, Chapter 7, Section 7-171.4, Exceptions, and 7-171.7A, Compliance Period, Failure, or Refusal to Comply. Motion by Councilman Brennan, seconded by Councilman Carroll. Seeing no, Councilman DeFranches, you have, you've asked for the floor. I, I have a quick question. Mr. Petty, may I ask you the question, please? Um, I noticed the verbiage is very specific. It says within the 15-day period after tagging of the abandoned motor vehicle. And we're not necessarily saying that it is in decrepit condition, but it appears to be abandoned because it's not moving. Um, the owner shall abate the nuisance by um, moving the motor vehicle such that it is completely enclosed within a building in a manner that it is, you know, enclosed building is really what I'm looking at. If they have a back carport, in some cases I know they do, that you can access, not grass, but a back carport, that's not an enclosed area. Could the, and it would not be visible from the street if it's in the back portion of the property. This would prohibit someone from keeping a car there? Well, it, well, it already does. Um, th that's correct. That, that is not good enough, putting it under a carport in the back. This is just really a cleanup issue for, we've gotten a couple of appeals where it, it was questionable. This language is further down in the ordinance already. It's just brought up and mirrored just so that it's clear to basically attorneys so they understand that right. you got to read a little bit further than you're reading and it's going to save some appeals and it's just mirroring language that's already there. It doesn't change anything. It just cleans up the language. The only reason I ask that is um, about three years ago, I guess it must have been before you were here, sir, there was a couple whose son had died. They wanted to keep the car. They didn't use the car, but it was the only thing they had left of their car. And so the city worked with them to make sure that it was not visible from the street, that it was not on grass, that it was on a cement in a, an area that had cement and, and a, you know, a car poured over it. And we, at that point, had allowed them to keep it under those circumstances. And that's why I'm asking the question. Uh, I, I won't comment on what you right. did. But, I'm just saying, um, I just wanted to put it out there. You know. That was a very particular situation, you know, that the city tried to work with a couple. Yes, um, but that, that was the reason why I asked about the enclosed portion. Yeah, it, but it you've answered my question. Yes, it's all the same. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Seeing no further discussion, Councilman, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 6-0. Item 12B is summary ordinance number 12,097, an ordinance providing for an honorary, honorary designation of a portion of West Napoleon Avenue beginning at intersection with the west with the west boundary of Roosevelt Boulevard with the intersection of the east boundary of Williams Boulevard to John T. Laverine Jr. Memorial Way and other related matters. Mr. Motion Mr. 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 President, me. excuse me. Um, I believe the mayor is yeah, asking for you to defer this till later in the meeting. Councilman. Okay. I can't. All right, motion. You want to family members are on the way. Mo motion by Councilman Impostato, uh, seconded by Councilman DeFranches to defer item 12B to later in the meeting. Yes, sir. 
Councilman, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 6-0. Item 13 is resolutions and motions by council members. Item 13A is a resolution calling for a public hearing on August 18, 2016 to determine whether structures located at 3120 Albany Street, Counter, Louisiana, shall be abated by repair, rehabilitation, demolition, or removal. Motion by Councilman Carroll, seconded by Councilman DeFranchez. Seeing no discussion, Councilman, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 6-0. Item 3B is a resolution appointing David R. DeForges, DeFor DeForges as Kenner Police Departmental Municipal Fire and Police Civil Service Board Representative for the term of July 31st, 2016 through July 30th, 2017. Motion by Councilman Impostato, seconded by Councilman Brennan. Seeing no discussion, Councilman, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 6-0. Item 14 is items removed from the consent agenda. We have none. Item 15 is acceptance of contracts and similar matters approved by the mayor. Item 15A is summary ordinance number 12,096, an ordinance authorizing an agreement to provide disaster debris management and monitoring services in accordance with request for proposal number 16-6347. Um, Mr. President, I've received a request to amend this to include um, Tetra Tech Incorporated to fill in the blanks as the vendor for the contract. Okay. So I, I need Mo a motion. motion on the amendment. Yes, sir. Motion by Councilman Brennan, seconded by Councilman Reno um, to amend item 15A. Seeing no discussion, Councilman, please vote on the amendment. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 6-0. Motion by Councilman Brennan, seconded by Councilman Reno, to approve item 15A as amended. Seeing no discussion, Councilman, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 6-0. Item 15B is summary ordinance number 12,098, an ordinance approving amendment number one, to the agreement with Dom Development Corporation for miscellaneous carpentry work and increasing the agreement $100,001 for a new not to exceed amount of $200,000 annually for the Department of Parks and Recreation. Motion by Councilman Klein, seconded by Councilman Carroll. Seeing no discussion, Councilman, please vote. You're gonna move, yeah. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 6-0. Item 15C is summary ordinance number 12,099, an ordinance accepting the responsive bid received from Han Enterprises Incorporated in the amount of 88,661 to furnish and install three modern shade covers at Kenner City Park in accordance with sealed bid number 16-6355 for the Department of Parks and Recreation. Motion by Councilman Impostato, seconded by Councilman Brennan. Um, I, I don't want to get into a lengthy discussion about this, but I want to I want to certainly acknowledge and thank um, each of the councilmen to my right and left, Councilman DeFranches and Councilman Brennan. Um, I approached each of them. What this is for, uh, we are putting we get uh, District Five includes the Kenner City Park, and over the playground equipment, uh, there are um, there's there's no shade, and uh, actually we see a lot of activity at even a neighboring church in the summertime because that whole thing is shaded. This is gonna put, uh, I don't even wanna guess at the square footage, uh, Mr. Maricola, but it's, it's basically gonna cover the entire tot lot, which will reduce the, the temperature out there probably as much as 20 to plus degrees. Um, but it's very expensive, almost $100,000, which would virtually deplete the District 5 account. Um, I, I went to both Councilman DeFranches and Councilman Brennan and said, you know, I believe this is a city park issue, which is a citywide issue, and each of them agreed instantly. And although the, the at-large councilmen do not have uh, nearly the amount of funds available to them to assist with infrastructure improvements, each of them uh, dedicated the bulk of what they had in their accounts to do this. And so uh, on behalf of the citizens in not only City of Kenner, but 
I mean, District 5, but the City of Canada as a whole, I want to thank each of them for their willingness to do that. Uh, Councilman Reno, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Mr. Maricoli, um, are these the same type of uh, shade covers like you put up at uh, Gladys Playground? Yes. Okay. Because I know we've put different ones up throughout the city, and those have really held up well. They look nice, and they've done a great job. So, uh, and, and thank you, Council yeah. members, for supporting that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Yeah, and that's the, um, I mean, I got to be honest, I, I had no idea it was going to cost $100,000 to do that, but to be honest, some of the numbers were a lot higher than that, so it, it is what it is, and I think, but we will benefit from it, so. Seeing no further discussion, Councilman, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 6-0, and I believe that the mayor would like to take item 12 sure. that's at this juncture. Are you going to reread? Why don't you reread it? Yes, sir. Oops, I'm just trying to find it. I'm sorry. Item 12B is Summary Ordinance Number 12,097, an ordinance providing for an honorary designation of a portion of West Napoleon Avenue beginning at the intersection with the west boundary of Roosevelt Boulevard with the intersection of the east boundary of Williams Boulevard to John T. Lavering Jr. Memorial Way and other related matters. Motion by Councilman DeFranches, seconded by Councilman Klein. Uh, Councilman DeFranches, would you like to open the this is a district too. Would you mind if, if Councilman Segura open? Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, this is uh, something special to my district. Um, as you may not know, Councilman uh, John Laverine Jr. was the second official councilman in District 2 uh, and served for many years. Uh, was a very fine person. You know, he was a family friend of my family and I. Uh, grew up with his sons and daughter. And so um, as he uh, came out of service from the city of Kenner and went off to the parish and then uh, retired, uh, moved with his family across the lake and then uh, had some health issues and then unfortunately uh, passed away uh, last year. Uh, not exactly, I think it was last year, the year before. Yeah, it was, it was last year. Yes. So, um, then his son, uh, John Labring III, took over as the District 2 councilman, uh, served his uh, time uh, of eight years. And so the Labring family has certainly spent a lot of time here in District 2 and has uh, been very um, influential in the development of this district. And so uh, it certainly uh, merits that we do something to recognize uh, the service of John Laverine Jr. And so uh, in cooperation with Mr. Claude Tadaro, uh, we have worked out the understanding to uh, have the portion of West Napoleon from Williams to Roosevelt uh, named in honor of John Laverine Jr. Now this is not renaming West Napoleon because we had some issues with uh, businesses that would have objected if we tried to do that because of them having to change their addresses. And so um, worked it out with them that we are just uh, naming this the Memorial Way uh, so they can still receive their mail as the, uh, on their West Napoleon address but um, truly want to recognize uh, this service that the La uh, John Lavering Jr. made to the city by naming that section uh, in honor of him uh, as, as, as a memorial way. Um, the, uh, several of the family members are here, so I, I obviously uh, encourage you and ask you to please support in voting for this. And, but when you finish and we take the vote, if we can take a pause and take a picture, I have a presentation to go with that to the family. So I'll yield back to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Councilman DeFranchi, you have the floor. Thank you, Council President. Um, John Lavering and his entire family are good family friends. We've known each other for so many years and I, I'm so proud to be able to move on this. Um, 
Mr. Lavering actually served for 17 years on the district uh, uh, as a district two councilman serving the district two seat in the city of Kenner. He actually won a runoff election for that council seat back in 1978. That goes pretty far back. And then he um, coasted into that. He won it easily. He worked hard, but he won it easily, which says a lot about him. And he uh, won re-election back in 1982. He then ran unopposed in 86 and in 90. And, he, and then he won another term in 1994. We didn't have term limits back then. So he, he, he really represented that district well. And many would say it was one of the best district council, uh, district two councilmen they had. Um, he then ran for the Jefferson Parish Council seat, and that was the rest of the, mostly the, that part of Kenner, the southern part of Kenner, and which is now called District 5 on the uh, Jefferson Parish Council. And he represented that area as well, where he served for two terms. Um, he was someone who was very committed to the city. He loved the city, and he wanted to serve the city, and he did that with honor. And I'm so happy to be able to move on this uh, on behalf of, of uh, his family. I think um, we need to honor those people that give um, their best for the city that they love. And so, again, we are so proud to be able to do this. Unfortunately, Mr. Lavering died on Friday. Um, I believe it was June 19th of 2015. I remember being at the funeral. But um, if you attended the funeral, you saw how many people there to, to show their love for that man. And so, again, to the family, our condolences for their loss. But we're so proud to be able to do this for all of you today. Thank you. Seeing no further discussion, Councilman, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 6-0. And if we could uh, go to the, the steps for the presentation. And if the family, if you'll please join us. work. Madam Clerk.
Item 16 is ordinances and resolution and summary for first reading. Item 16A is an ordinance amending the 2012, 2013, 2013-2014, and 2014-2015 capital budgets to reallocate $187,195 from various complete projects to projects for public works, equipment, and improvements to the Emergency Operations Center. Item 16B is an ordinance amending the 2016 2017 operating and capital budgets to budget funds received for building permit fees from the Louis Armstrong New Orleans International Airport Expansion Program during the 2015-2016 physical year that were previously budgeted. Item 16C is an ordinance amending the 2016-2017 operating and capital budgets to budget funds available from FEMA pre-disaster mitigation grant program for 75% of the cost of retrofitting wind protection to the Kenner Police Department building and provide additional funds for the city's 25% share of the cost and to budget the related expenditures. Item 16D is an ordinance approving an agreement with the firm of Linfield Hunter and Junius Incorporated for professional services relating to Rivertown South Kenner drainage improvements in an amount not to exceed $481,900 for the Department of Public Works. Item 16E is an ordinance accepting the lowest responsive bid received from Compliance Enviro Systems LLC for a two-year contract for sanitary sewer evaluation services in accordance with seal bid number 16-6356 in an amount not to exceed $200,000 per year for the Department of Public Works. Item 16F is an ordinance accepting the responsive bid received from Rainey Electronics Incorporated in the amount of $9,846 to furnish and install one scoreboard at Lincoln Manor Playground in accordance with seal bid number 16-1551 for the Department of Parks and Recreation. Item 16G is an ordinance authorizing the purchase of dual tandem gooseneck trailer in the amount of $6,165.60 from the North Shore trailer and equipment in accordance with telephone bid number T16-2432 for the Department of Parks and Recreation. Item 16H is an ordinance ratifying the emergency replacement of the 15-ton rooftop AC unit of Building A located at 1801 Williams Boulevard by Beacon Air Conditioning, Heating and Refrigerator Incorporated in the amount of $19,135 for the Department of Public Works. Item 16I is an ordinance accepting the responsive bid received from Kelcat Land LLC in the amount of $126,124 for the purchase of two Wacker Newson ST45 10,000 pound class vertical lift compact, compact skidster load cab model in accordance with seal bid number 16-6348 for the Department of Parks for the Department of Public Works. Item 16J is an ordinance authorizing the utilization of Jefferson Parish Contract 55-15567 with Truck and Transport Equipment Company Incorporated for the purchase of vehicle bodies and accessories on an as-needed basis in an amount not to exceed $220,000 for annually for the Department of Public Works. Item 16K is an ordinance accepting the re lowest responsive bid received from Perrette's Menswear Incorporated for the purchase of rain jackets and related items on an as-needed basis in accordance with letter bid number 16-1550 in an amount not to exceed $25,000 annually for the Kenner Police Department. Item 16L is an ordinance accepting the lowest responsive bid received from Kevin J. Smith Construction Company for the Kenner City Hall Building D Elevator addition in accordance with seal bid number 16-6343 in, in the amount of $472,510 and approving change order number one which reduces the contract amount. Item 17 is reports from the council and our special committees. Anyone? Councilman Reno, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to let everybody know um, we had a, a, a fundraiser, um, I believe it was last year or the year before, at the end of the year before, uh, for KPD to uh, uh, acquire bulletproof vests um, for their offices. And the Rivertown Theaters for the Performing Arts has offered to do that again. Uh, it will be Thursday, September 8th. Um, 
and the normal price of, uh, um, of admission is $30 per person. Um, the, the theater is going to keep $10 and donate $20 of every ticket sold. The $10 is to defray the cost of that production. Um, my council office, well, actually, I'm, I'm going to be doing it myself. Um, we're going to provide coffee and desserts uh, one hour prior to the show, so the doors open at 7, um, and also during intermission. So um, hope everybody will support that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Sure. Councilman Carroll, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. We said it earlier during the uh, consent agenda about the festival that will be going on, <clears throat> excuse me, on August 13th in Rivertown. But I just wanted to remind everyone again, it is August 13th, and it's going to be from, uh, let me see, from 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. There will be a mass on, at 4 p.m., and it's the to the Santo Domingo de Guzman, St. Dominic. Uh, Councilman DeFrances, I hope I said that correctly. But uh, that is the date again from, from 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. in Rivertown at the Heritage Park where, they, where we do the music in the park. So they're going to be uh, dances, they're going to be food, they're going to be shows, they're going to be food. I say that twice. So if you can make it, please come out and enjoy a good family uh, time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. Item 18 is new business. Item 18A, at the request of Council Members DeFranchise and Reno, a discussion requesting an update from the administration on the property being developed on the corner of Joe Yenny Boulevard and Williams Boulevard by Councilwoman at Large Maria DeFranchise and District 3 Councilman Keith Reno. Councilman DeFranchise, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, I'd like to explain to you how this came. This discussion came about. Um, I came to know some of the people involved in this project, and a few mornings we, we we had coffee, and they mentioned that they had been trying to put a meeting together with the administration and with Jetco, and they mentioned that uh, I hadn't come to fruition. So I asked them if they wanted me to talk to the mayor, and they said they would appreciate it. So I spoke to. Uh, acting Mayor Segor, and he agreed to it, but then there were some problems because first one person was going on vacation, I'm not going to go through the whole ending, then someone else, and then I went back again, and it was supposed to go on, and I talked to Annalisa Kelly from JETCO, and again, it seemed to fall through the cracks a little bit, only because of so many other things going on at this city, in the city of Kenner. So um, I talked to the mayor again, and he said absolutely he would make sure that, it, um, that the meeting went forward, and the only thing I asked was that I... Uh, obviously, I can only speak for myself. I asked to be included in the meeting since um, I had been working with those gentlemen to try to get the meeting organized. But there was another reason, because when Ed Muniz was mayor and we were working on the target project, he included not only the district council person, but the two at larges at every single meeting. And so I learned so much through those meetings um, about TIFFs and uh, about what JETCO can do to help economic development come into the city, which were, I found extremely beneficial. Then when the Solomon Project, our Grand Theater came forward, the same thing. I was there from step one. If money had to be put forth from, from the District 4 Council budget in order to get a traffic study done, we did it immediately. Again, because of working together for those issues, those economic development issues. Uh, when the Coles Project came, we were intimately involved with that. And the only reason I want to point out that that project failed to go forward was not because of the city of Kenner, because the city of Kenner did a phenomenal job getting a TIF and working with JETCO to do whatever we needed to do to make that project viable. But they had a major, major shakeup at their corporate headquarters and put everything on hold for a couple of years. But because of that, I was on speed dial with the site locator for Coles. So that kind of relationship that you build by wor working together is very beneficial. So I was a little bit surprised when I ran into the same gentleman again, and he said, well, we had the meeting yesterday. So since I didn't get to attend the meeting and I, want to, I wanted to know exactly you know, how, how things are progressing, I thought the best way to do it was to put it on the agenda. But I do think we need to work together. If we're going to bring economic development, everybody should be involved in doing everything we can to make it happen. Thank you for the time. Is there a question? Oh. Letting Councilman Reno 
Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. I, 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 Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just want to ask the administration that any time that there's something that's going on in any council district, it doesn't matter whether it's mine or any of these other gentlemen uh, district, that they be included because, you know, we represent the people of that district. And if y'all are working towards something, we would like to know what's going on as it's going on. And that's my only, uh, you know, I think I'm asking, and I've asked that before uh, from when Mayor Yenny was here. I've asked it before of Mr. Quigley, and I'm just asking that we be included in any of those meetings. Thank you, Mr. Prince. You have the floor. Thank you. A uh, couple statements and questions, so we'll, I'll try to incorporate them all together. Um, first thing is, uh, there are, and I think I've even commented this on the last council meeting on a statement that Councilwoman DeFranch has made, there are m many times working meetings with individuals who have some concept, idea, uh, that they want to present and do in the city. So they'll ask the administration for a meeting to sort of present that idea, present that thought to determine where they need to go next, what they need to do to move it forward. So the administration's responsibility in meeting with these individuals is to gather that information and then give them the guidance to determine where they need to go next. A lot of these discussions are just, okay, if you have an idea, you need to go to planning and file for your uh, plan for some action or go straight to code to file for a permit if, if it, you already fall within the parameters of planning and don't need to get planning approval. So uh, the particular meeting that Councilwoman DeFranchez is speaking of has been banted about uh, by herself, as she said, and the developer of the project at the uh, end of Williams, which is under construction. So that project is already under construction. The PUD has already been approved, and it's developing. So not sure what the meeting was needed for. We never did get an explanation from anybody, but we allowed the developer and the financer to come to a meeting to enlighten us as to what a discussion needed to be had. And uh, at that meeting, I can surely uh, explain to you that they attested that their project at that location is moving along. You can see the structure coming out the ground and that everything that's been uh, approved through their plan, their PUD, is uh, functioning. They have no other need uh, of us. Um, so we sort of left it at that. If you have other ideas, which we explained to them, for perhaps, and we don't know this, other projects, then bring them forth as a project idea for us to give you that guidance. At this point, there is no other project ideas on the table. There's no discussions of projects. There's m several parties involved that uh, may or may not be involved in other projects. They need to sort that out themselves first. So the, the, the meeting that we had was just a sort of casual get together to say, hey, is there a problem with the project that's in place already that uh, you need some assistance from us on? And they've assured us that no, they have no issues with that project. It is progressing as uh, they planned. Um, so I don't have any other information than to enlighten that came out of that meeting because there was no other projects to talk about uh, being presented to the city. So without a project specifically being presented, um, 
the administration has nothing to present to the council either by district or as a whole at this point. Uh, and I recognize what Councilman Reno suggested that anything going on in a council district is something that the councilman um, is, uh, should be aware of. But I'm gonna say from firsthand knowledge that doesn't always happen. I have a project in my district right now going on that was not brought to my attention and was brought to the administration, went through the administration, and is proceeding now. It wasn't to my knowledge that it's happening. So I'm now accepting that it's there and it's been voted on and it's under works. But it doesn't always happen that way, and I don't agree or disagree, but that is the process that the administration um, takes on projects. I've tried to say that, you know, as far as I'm gonna be is open, but that's gonna be to the extent that I can be. And when a developer doesn't bring a project forward, he hasn't brought a project forward, I don't have anything to present to either a district councilman, a councilman at large, or anybody that um, can be presented. Once that developer has a discussion with us to present a project and we guide them through the proper processes of going to the planning or if necessary, just straight to code, like I said earlier, then that's what we'll do. And then at that point, we'll inform the council of the pending project that is gonna be going particularly through planning, uh, which does take the council approval. So, um, I'm not sure if that answers your question, Councilwoman DeFranches, but. Well, if, uh, I, if I could interject, Councilman Segur, I mean, I think it's pretty simple. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, did, I didn't necessarily understand what the original question was, but the, the issue that I do think is, I don't know that anyone could disagree with, if someone were to, were to come to you and say, hey, I need to talk to you about an issue on such and such street, and you know, even before that meeting, that deals with District 2, 3, 4, or whatever, out of, comp out of courtesy, I think it would be appropriate to contact whomever. And I mean, I gotta say, Mayor Yanni was, was, from my vantage point, Johnny on the spot on that, to at least give me the option to attend if I felt necessary. Um, and I think that was a, certainly a much better practice. And again, I don't know, I haven't had the experience that this administration has shut me or excluded me out of any meeting, so I can't speak to that. But I, I don't know that we can disagree with the the concept that the councilman should be notified if that's going to happen. I mean, I just out of number one courtesy, number two practicality, because um, you know when neighbors in those neighborhoods start talking about that project, or we heard this, that, or the other, um, I'm sure it would be a better practice if that district councilman knows. Just like so they don't experience what you're experiencing in, in your district. So I don't think that's a real discussion point. Did you you, you need to ask something, Absolutely. councilman? Segura, my understanding is one of the topics they wanted to discuss was the was the lift station because they brought that to my attention that there was some that there was some that there were questions about possibly the need of a lift station which would not only address their project but possibly Lake Town to some degree and that they wanted to discuss that not only with the administration but with Jetco and that was the conversation they had with me and for that reason I thought it was absolutely important that they come to you the acting mayor Mr. Quigley to since that seemed to be a to me it seemed an important issue to discuss and that's why when you and I spoke I asked to be included in that meeting because we had had that I had had that conversation with the gentleman involved in the project if you remember and so it's for that reason I thought it was important to find out what progress and if we were addressing that issue at all the lift station that is there handling the project that's in place right now is adequate uh, uh, mr Are jose you expand on that station at all to incorporate uh to also address some of the issues since because of its location not only would it impact their particular project but it could Im impact a project you know if we had some development in lake town that was my understanding from the people with whom i had spoken as a trying to explain but you know cautiously mm -hmm. because these developers have their ideas but they're not 
jail jet, and they don't want information released to the public. Now, talking about releasing. I, I understand, but this conversation is public. So, Councilman Segura, is there any update you can give us on that project? I said the, the, the project is on track and is is proceeding as forward. Is there any and further that is update the only that, project that is before us. Is there any further update that can be given? No, sir. Madam Clerk, can we proceed? Item 19 is unfinished business and our motions to reconsider from a tabled position. We have none. Item 20 is persons wishing to address the council on special subject matters. One and only. Al Morella, 4260 East Loyola Drive, 5th District, 44 years. Uh, first of all, I'd like to ask, uh, is Ms. Lovett in the audience from the Kenneth Star? No? Okay, well, uh, Ms. Lovett will have a one meeting tomorrow. At the next meeting, if she's not here, if she chooses not to come, my questions and comments are going without her. Now, uh, I want to pass along, uh, there was an article in the Times Picayune last month uh, concerning a settlement with mortgage services in the state of Louisiana. The uh, state treasurer deposited $2 million. There's several parishes involved in this settlement. Jefferson Parish uh, involves the most people, is one of the parishes that involves the most people. Uh, this averages out to about $300 a person. What this settlement was for was the, the housing bubble that burst in 2008. And it, it, like I said, the treasurer deposited $2 million. Uh, there's a website, latreasury.org. There's a toll-free number, a hotline. Uh, 1 888 925 4127. So I'm sure that this uh, settlement, some people in Kenneth, some homeowners in this city, since this is Jefferson Parish, may be affected by this. And uh, I don't know whether they know this or not. I mean, it was a little bitty article, you know, somebody could be easily overlook it that even reads the paper, but I, I noticed it. But anyway, I'd like to pass this on to the citizens of Kenneth. You got the tool free number, you want me to repeat it? Does anybody need me to repeat this? I'm good. Okay. Okay, 888-925-4127, Greg. And the website is latreasury.org. And it's roughly about $300 per person. And like I stated, uh, Jefferson Parish is one of the parishes uh, where most, most people are affected, okay? Yes, sir. A anybody got any comments, any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Al. That is all. Wait, Councilman Carroll, your mic's on. Were you asking us to for something? Okay. <laughs> Motion to adjourn? So moved. Whereas, throughout our lives, milestones mark the passage of time, like becoming a teenager at 13, reaching the age of 16 and earning the right to drive, the anticipation of voting at 18, and the intimate age of 21, where we officially become adults. Then there's the excitement of going to college, choosing a career, meeting that special someone, and getting married. All milestones that celebrate during an incredible journey we call life. Whereas, considering that life is indeed a unique journey, 25 productive years in business is indeed a significant milestone and an achievement we celebrate today with Craig Goodwin physical therapist and owner of Orthopedic and Sports Therapy of Kenner in celebration of his 25th anniversary as a business in Kenner. Whereas, it all started decades ago when Craig met Ramel, and with love in the air came marriage, and then moving to Kenner, becoming residents for the last 31 years. 
Throughout three decades, they are blessed with three beautiful children, Alexandria, Remy, and Ridge. Whereas, as a graduate of Rummel, uh, we got another one of them Rummel grads here. <laughs> uh, Greg obtained degrees from Southeastern Louisiana University and LSU Medical Center. His private practice has grown to include Kenner, Mattery, and Harvey with affiliation to Tulane Medical Center Orthopedics, LRI Charity Hospital Rehabilitation, and Baton Rouge Physical Therapy. Ever active in the community, Craig sponsors events for the American Lung Association, Children's Hospital and Sports Injury Prevention, his athletic training sports medicine doctor at Rummel and SMD with Jefferson Parish Schools. In professional societies, he's an active member associating with American Physical Therapy, Louisiana Physical Therapy, Sports, thera sports Physical Therapy, and Orthopedic Physical Therapy. Through his career, he has been appointed clinical and educational staff in New York, Cybex Institute, NFL Combines, New Orleans Zephyr, AAA Baseball, NHL Colorado, NBA Chicago Bulls, and New Orleans Storm Soccer. In his spare time, he contributes articles for the Kenner Star and is a parishioner of Our Lady of Perpetual Help. Whereas the city of Kenner hereby commends this businessman on successfully expanding his private practice in the last two and a half decades with commemorative milestones along the way. Balance with a loving family and good friends with wishes for many more to come. Now, therefore, I, Michael G. Segur, by the authority vested in me as acting mayor for the city of Kenner, with the Kenner City Council do hereby congratulate Craig M. Goodwin, orthopedic and sports therapy for 25 years. Congratulations. Just want to say thanks. Thanks for all y'all. Um, 25 years, it goes by quick. Um, everything goes by real fast, you know that. I want to thank Kevin Santani for putting this together for me, a, uh, a brother of mine for the last 50 years, and uh, the mayor and uh, the whole council. Thank you all.